An accidental acquaintance having laid the beginning of the triumph of the artist and poet. The work that gave freedom to the serf and gave rise to scandal and riddles. The perseverance that helped to make an outstanding discovery. The Taras Shevchenko National Museum. There used to be 47 rooms with 40 fireplaces and stoves. Today there are 24 rooms with more than 4,000 exhibits. And there, where there used to be a passage through to the courtyard, there is now a luxurious lobby. In the past, only the select few could enter this building. Now everyone who so wishes can see the exhibit that forever changed the fate of the future artist and poet. Oil, canvas, 110 by 83 centimeters in size, on which the outstanding romantic poet is depicted. It looks as though he is looking at us from eternity. The portrait was truly outstanding. The work which Zhukovsky's contemporaries called one of the best belongs to Karl Brulov. Without exaggeration, perhaps the most famous, most influential artist at that time. But the canvas on which a great mission was entrusted was quite a difficult one for the recognized master and almost immediately caused scandal and gossip, the echoes of which can still be heard now. In 1831, Taras Shevchenko arrived in St. Petersburg together with Mr. Engelhardt. A stay of almost two years in then Poland and now the capital of Lithuania left rather ambitious recollections with the serf Shevchenko. He returned and was sure he wanted to be involved in drawing professionally. The realization of his desire was also facilitated by the atmosphere into which Pavel Engelhardt immersed himself in this new place of residence. The nobleman decided to start the same luxury accommodation as his brother Vasily. To do this, he invited Vasily Shiryaev, the famous designer of that time from St. Petersburg. Pavel appointed Shevchenko as his supervisor, so Taras looked after everything. The master saw that Shevchenko had an inclination towards painting, so he sent him to Shiryaev's workshop. During the day, Shevchenko listened to and carried out instructions of the master and at night he visited the summer garden to depict statues. He quite quickly became one of the best students at Shiryaev's artel. Shiryaev had an order for the decoration of theaters, but he didn't have an artist who knew how to paint ornaments. And only Shevchenko could make such decorations here. Shevchenko was attentive to various tasks, not only to copying, but also to studying various elements of culture. Even as a non-professional artist, Shevchenko brought good money to Shiraev. After all, he skillfully carried out the orders, which were certainly not cheap, that his teacher received. According to Volodymyr Sirotenko, the serf brought dividends not only to Vasil Shiraev. Engelhard had a beautiful wife in St. Petersburg, for whom he was on occasion ready to lay down his life. But he was also known as a great womanizer. While every womanizer should have mistresses, Pavel Engelhardt was no exception. As Shevchenko later recalled, he often painted the portraits of all the Lord's mistresses. It's clear that Engelhardt's mistresses were also Shevchenko's mistresses.
In the summer of 1836, the latest nighttime visit to the summer garden became a fateful one and laid the foundation for the gossip still doing the rounds regarding the portrait of Zhukovsky. It was on one of those summer evenings in St. Petersburg that he met Ivan Soshenko, who was like Shevchenko Ukrainian, but a little older than Taras and had already studied at the St. Petersburg Academy of Arts. And it was Soshenko, the very person who noticed his talent, not as a painter who will paint aristocratic estates, which is what Shevchenko studied at Shuryaev's, but as a person who can make a good career as an artist for himself. In future, their friendship developed into cooperation, as Soshenko was engaged in his direct care in the field of art development. Thanks to Soshenko, Tara Shevchenko was among the creative elite of then St. Petersburg. By the way, there were a lot of people from Ukraine, talented people who were educated in the capital of the then Russian Empire, actively worked there. Shevchenko visited literary evenings at Yevhen Hrebinka's house and met influential people there. He was also introduced to Karl Brilov, perhaps the most famous and influential artist of that time. His friendship with Ivan Soshenko and his further recommendation regarding training in the society for the encouragement of artists enabled Shevchenko to acquire certain skills. And those works, which he created at the Imperial Society for the Encouragement of the Arts, were shown to Brilov. It's possible that Brilov saw some things that he liked and was interested in when he evaluated them. Here, for some reason, Soshenko attributed everything to himself. It was now Soshenko who introduced Shevchenko to Brilov. His acquaintance with Brilov was due thanks to another acquaintance with Ukrainian writer Yevhen Hrebinka, and those, in turn, were introduced by a friend of Ivan Soshenko, Ukrainian painter Apollon Makritsky. He, like Hrebinka, was a high-ranking nobleman. They both studied at the Nizhen Gymnasium of Higher Sciences, a Russian writer of prose of Ukrainian carpatho russian origin by the name of Nestor Kukolnik belonged to the society in Nizhen. Hrebinka and Kukolnik were good friends of Karl Brulov. It was Nestor who told Brilov about Shevchenko, and he ordered Soshenko to invite Shevchenko. It was only then that Shevchenko became the so-called D'Artagnan in the company of those three musketeers. Shevchenko was introduced to Vasily Zhukovsky in order to become free from serfdom. Zhukovsky was not just a romantic poet, but a politically influential man, and a teacher, and a mentor of future Emperor Alexander II. Shevchenko's talent for drawing was appreciated even by such great people who raised the question of buying him out of serfdom. The ransoming of Tar Shevchenko was an exceptional event. It was a whole process that for many years remained enveloped in disputes and passions and in secrets and riddles to this very day. Today, an exhibit presented in the Taras Shevchenko Museum is a reminder of the psalm uttered by Engelhardt. He argued that he had spent money on the education of his serf Shevchenko, and that's why he asked 2,500 rubles for his freedom. By comparison, it was not a small amount, because an ordinary serf could cost 300 to 400 rubles, but there are cases when actresses, actors and musicians were released for 500 rubles. This was a large sum, but not the highest recorded in those days. And even 2,500 rubles turned out to be a significant amount for Shevchenko's friends. They decided to hold a private lottery in order to raise funds. And it was here that the most interesting and most scandalous part began. The main law that the draw was a portrait of Vasily Zhukovsky painted by Karl Brulov. 
почему портрет Жуковский? But exactly why a portrait of Zhukovsky? First of all, Zhukovsky was involved in the issue and agreed to pose for a portrait. Secondly, with a certain commercial purpose in mind, the imperial family were far more likely to buy a portrait of Zhukovsky than a portrait of a person they did not know. So perhaps it was for this reason that they chose this author, Brilov, and then Vasily Zhukovsky, a well-known and influential person in the imperial family. On April 2, 1837, the portrait of Vasily Zhukovsky, which Brilov began to paint, was already in the making, and work on this portrait continued right up till April 30, 1838. It so happened that Zhukovsky, whose portrait was not yet ready, went on a long journey with his pupil, heir to the throne Alexander II. First it was to Siberia and then to Europe, but the portrait wasn't completed even after they had returned. Brilov's nature was such that if he was not able to complete a picture immediately, he could not complete it. And so students of the great Karl completed the work, which was ordered for the royal family. Therefore, it was impossible to entrust it to one of the students. Brilov drew three sketches of Zhukovsky. Nevertheless, on May 4, 1838, a close lottery draw was held for the as-yet-unfinished painting. As there were unfinished hands and certain other elements, the portrait remained in the Brilov workshop for a long time. This was despite the fact that the auction was held and the royal family gave 1,000 rubles for this picture. On May 7, 1838, France handed Taras Shevchenko a priceless document. Later, Shevchenko was reproached for the fact that he harshly criticized his benefactors, the royal family. But there are several significant points. It is doubtful that the royal family allocated money to free the serf from serfdom. It most likely paid money for the portrait of Zhukovsky, a well-known man who was close to them, by Karl Brilov. In addition, it is known that the document free in Tara Shevchenko cost 2,500 rubles. The royal family gave only 1,000, less than a half. Where did the rest come from? The rest 1,500 were already gathered by France, and for 2,500 rubles Shevchenko was freed from serfdom. He was 24 years old when he became a free man, and he very shortly enrolled in the St. Petersburg Academy of Arts. After the young artist's freedom was bought, he settled on the fourth line of Vasilevsky Island at house number 100. And the portrait that gave him his freedom remained in Karl Brilov's workshop until almost the end of his life. Why didn't the imperial family take the portrait of their famous artist of St. Petersburg? The answer to this question is full of secrets, conjecture and scandal. According to Volodymyr Saratenko, Brilov was completely unable to finish the portrait. Then Soshenko told Shevchenko that it was his business, his ransom, so he had to complete the portrait, and it was Taras who really finished the image of Zhukovsky. There are facts that prove that it was Shevchenko who finished this portrait, the hands and elements of clothing. Supporters of conspiracy theories are certain that the royal gendarmerie was able to find out who actually painted the portrait of Zhukovsky, and the imperial family disdained the work of a serf's brush. The mystery does not end there. It is known that after Gulov's death, the portrait was bought by the Tretyakov Gallery.
Dovšeť... And the original was stored in the Tretyakov gallery for a long time. And the Tarashevchenko museum houses a copy of this portrait. But when we got in touch with the Tretyakov gallery, we were presented with official information that they do not have this portrait. And the original, the very original, that Brilov painted and in which Shevchenko was involved, is actually being kept in the Tarashevchenko museum. The portrait, which gave freedom to Ukrainian artist and poet Taras Shevchenko, has been preserved at the Taras Shevchenko National Museum in Kiev for almost 80 years. But it was possible to solve one of its secrets only recently. It seems that the time has not yet come for the other puzzles that still remain.